Hi there, and welcome to this video. My name is Casper Johansson, and I'm your YouTube philosopher. In this video, I'm going to be talking about strange philosophers and their strange philosophies. Actually, I researched a bit, and there actually aren't that many strange and very weird philosophies out there. But I did gather a handful of these uh, strange philosophers, and here are five strange philosophers that I would like to share with you in this video. The first philosopher was a German philosopher, Edward von Hartmann. And Hartmann believed that uh, mankind, through its uh, intelligence, will one day come to the revelation that uh, happiness is an illusion. It doesn't exist. Well, uh, that doesn't sound that weird, actually. But here's when it gets weirder. Hartmann predicts that mankind at some point in the future will collectively commit suicide. He, he believed that mankind actually would one day kill ourselves, that we all collectively, jointly would kill ourselves because we would come to, to the revelation that that is the most rational, rational and reasonable thing that we could do. Well, okay, <laughs> that uh, is a bit uh, depressing, I would say. You can look at Hartmann's uh, uh, philosophy in that way that, that, that you can philosophize that uh, maybe Earth and animals would, would have been better off without humans without mankind and so 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 you can think about it as, as a kind of a, what are the values of man in in, in terms of the whole uh, grand scheme uh, that's where Hartman can fits in but it might be kind of a overreaction that we should all kill ourselves but you can ponder about the special value of uh, mankind here on earth Okay, the next philosopher is an ancient Greek philosopher named Diogenes. And Diogenes was kind of a strange philosopher because he didn't write anything. His whole philosophy is uh, the way he lived his life. Because he lived like a vagabond. He lived like, a, like an animal, like a dog. He was actually called the cynic. And the word cynic comes from a Greek word that actually means dog. And he, he, the story goes that uh, Diogenes was pushing this barrel that he lived in around in Athens. He lived a very simple life where he uh, slept where he wanted to sleep. He, he took a crap where he wanted to take a crap. If he had to go, he had to go. It, there are even stories about him uh, masturbating in public. The great conqueror Alexander the Great, he uh, he came to Diogenes' barrel one day and said, "Well, Diogenes, what can I, Alexander the Great, do for you?" And Diogenes just uh, said to Alexander, "Can you move out of the way? You're blocking the sun." That's it. So. Alexander the Great had nothing to offer a guy like Diogenes because Diogenes was against materialism, conformism, and all kinds of conventions and normality. He was lived beyond that. He was trying to free himself in all the ways we are not. And that's the interesting thing about Diogenes, that, that there are something interesting about his uh, strange way of, of living. And you might think about well, when the pressure of our society comes uh, to be too rough that we have to have a, a good job, we have to have such and such a, a family, and, and, and all these uh, pressures that are in our society to be in, in a special way and, and have all these uh, uh, commodities, uh, we should think about Diogenes who was free from all of that and he says through us through time that it doesn't matter. It's not important. It do not define you. You 
you should free yourself for them from from them and live a more uh, pure way that's uh, a way you can view uh, Diogenes okay the third philosopher is a guy named Zeno and Zeno was also a Greek philosopher and he had an interest in these uh, paradoxes and came up with a uh, philosophical paradoxes that actually tried to explain that movement the idea of motion and movement doesn't really exist Zeno came up with a paradox about Achilles and the turtle and the turtle wins in a race over Achilles and that doesn't seem possible that a slow turtle could won over a great uh, Greek uh, hero but it does in Zeno's paradox because Achilles <laughs> mathematicians through the ages has pondered how this is a uh, so from this paradox but it's it, it's pretty quite simple that Achilles always if the turtles begins uh, 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 let's say a meter in front of Achilles he always has to to gain the distance that the turtle has uh, has uh, moved so Achilles when the turtle have moved this much Achilles have to cover that distance first before he can reach where the turtle is but at the time he reaches where that turtle is the turtle have moved a bit further and is over here and Achilles has to again uh, go through that distance again to be where the, the turtle is now and then the turtle is over here and Achilles and so far you, you can guess it by now that Achilles would never catch the turtle in that way the turtle will always be at a, at a fairly small distance in front of uh, Achilles that's rationally explained and that's the paradox of, of Zeno and his uh, weird philosophy that that the turtle can win because Zeno believed that movement is an illusion movement doesn't really exist that's fairly strange but you can look at the paradox in that way that that okay you can explain something in rational terms that makes absolutely no sense and that's an interesting philosophical viewpoint that you can ponder about such an argument that is rationally put forward but it doesn't make any sense that's the interesting thing about Zeno. Okay, the fourth philosopher was a guy named Pyho, and Pyho was also a, an ancient Greek philosopher, and he had a strange uh, philosophy as well called uh, uh, Pyhonianism, actually, because uh, it's uh, skepticism. And I made a video earlier about uh, skepticism and and what the skeptics uh, philosophy is about and you can click on that video now if you want to watch it you can click on it now but but anyways uh, Pyho he lived also a very strange life because he believed that that he shouldn't trust any form of knowledge because all knowledge for him was impossible so even the slightest hint of certain knowledge he wouldn't believe in for instance as a legend goes Pyho was out taking a walk his friends had to uh, stay close by him in order to, to, to stop him from doing strange things because he could go he could go over a street and he could see a wagon coming but he wouldn't believe that that was certain knowledge of that wagon coming towards him and could possibly run him over so he would just keep going and his friend would have to to stop him so he wouldn't be ran, run down by by these uh, horse wagons <laughs> that's really weird that he wouldn't even trust his own senses because senses are a form of knowledge and he wouldn't he went to so much extreme to uh, to, to say to himself I cannot trust this knowledge that I might be run down. 
if I cross the street and see a, a wagon coming. This is a very extreme and probably just a good bedtime story to, to scare other uh, future philosophers from becoming uh, skeptics, probably. But, but the whole idea of skepticism is uh, actually uh, one of uh, the most important thing in the philosophy to, to try to disprove if you can disprove it, but you can watch more about this uh, st this uh, skepticism in my video about skepticism. So let's take the the, f the fifth and uh, final of these uh, strange philosophers, and also the guy named Swedenborg. Swedenborg. He was a Swedish uh, philosopher, and uh, Swedenborg. Swedenborg. He lived at the same time as uh, Immanuel Kant. And Immanuel Kant and him actually wrote, they corresponded together in letters. And um, Kant believed actually that at first he seemed like a very rational guy. Later on, Kant uh, tried to avoid the subject about talking about Swedenborg because Swedenborg had a very, very strange philosophy when it comes to it. He, he started out uh, trying to uh, explain life in in rational in a very rational understanding, and he came to the to the revelation it wasn't possible to find this rational explanation of, of everything. Doesn't sound that weird, but then he had an epiphany one day on a walk. He had a, a vision, and. A, Afterwards, he started communicating with with demons and angels, and he understand finally what this all, whole world was about. Swedenborg wrote many books about his discoveries, his philosophical discoveries, his revelation, where, where he tries to under, uh, explain uh, the whole thing in still rational terms but still has the concept of angels and demons and uh, where he explains uh, the knowledge he gets through his uh, conversations he has with uh, angels and demons okay that's a bit strange but it also comes to a very very interesting idea where do philosophy ends and religion begins sometimes philosophy goes over to the realm of uh, religion and becomes a philosophy of religion. But also, you have to make up your own mind about Swedenborg. Is he a crazy, strange philosopher or does he have something uh, uh, about his philosophy that's, uh, that has something right about it? If you Google Swedenborg, you will find there's actually a whole academic society dedicated to Swedenborg and his philosophy. So a great a lot of people has actually found that Swedenborg has uh, some merit and his philosophy has uh, something to say about life. I personally am a skeptic about a guy who uh, who says that he talks to demons and angels. But that's my viewpoint, because this is about belief, right? And what is philosophy and what is belief? It, it, it makes you uh, ponder about things. And that's why I'm gonna end this video here with Swedenborg. You can make up your own mind about his philosophy and philosophy in general. So if you like the video, please give that a like button, a click and share this video and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in the next video.